Welcome back, I'm The Watcher. On this video, we are going back to the Rolex store. I really do love um, these hunt for steals, and I thought I would be slowing down, uh, not going there as much, because yes, I did get uh, my dream watch. Um, and it's kind of funny, because this is the first day I'm not wearing it since I bought it. I'm wearing my Accutron, um, and it just shows how much I miss it. So let's head into it though, uh, extended intro today. Um, but before I do flip you into it, I do want to keep announcing my Chanel chain giveaway. I'm going to be giving out this chain as soon as we hit 1,000 subscribers. So if you want to be entered, there's the four steps in the description below. So we're going to start with the precious metal watches here because uh, I think it's a pretty interesting uh, to talk about our conversation. So this is the Cellini's. We'll start here. And the Cellini line got discontinued. No, there is still the moon phase. And on, on my previous video, a bunch of people commented uh, that, yes, there is the moon phase. Uh, but everything else got discontinued. And I thought that was actually, you know, kind of funny. I got the one uh, that didn't. So do I think they're going to be super collectible? Not really. I, I'm sorry uh, for all the people that went out and bought a Cellini. Uh, but, yeah, I, I just well, – look, look at the Rolex prints, right? Um, that is a beautiful – a uh, watch manual wine from Rolex display case back and it doesn't go over uh, the retail and actually it's pretty much in half of the retail but let's cover another aspect let's cover the watches that go over list so in front of us we have a couple ladies on a presidential bracelet but we have the day date 36 so this is a 36 chocolate dial factory diamonds it is a lot of money. It is a substantial piece. But at the same time, when you buy this, you typically, yeah, I'm talking two, three years ago, you would lose, you know, maybe a couple, uh, you know, 20,000, not, not that significant, uh, but you would lose between five and 10 grand I, around that. I am not 100%, but that's what it would trade for. Now, you're pretty much getting close to list. On this particular piece, you might lose a little more because it's 36. But they, you know, the AD was telling me they had a champagne dial with baguettes on that bezel, and it's going over list. It's just insane. I, I was talking to them about it, uh, and they sold it to a customer before I got there. Um, but it was while I was there, you know, and uh, it was just pretty, just absolutely insane uh, what these watches are doing. So let's go into the other aspect and go to the two-tone models. So we're kind of going from precious metal to steel here on this video. And uh, as you can see in front of us, it is not the best uh, image here. I did only do a little bit of video, but that is a Wimbledon two-toned yellow gold, right? And that is 36 millimeters. Um, really interesting piece. I love the look of the two-toned. Yes, maybe it's not um, to everybody's taste, uh, and definitely not for the retail price. I think it was eleven thousand seven hundred at list, and um, you know it's cool, right? Um, but I would definitely not uh, prefer to get that. I would prefer steel, just because it is um, you know more obtainable. Um, but you know, it is, I think that watch looks better on steel. I would love to know your opinions in the comments below. There are better, uh, watches with, uh, two tone looks. I believe like, you know, tapestry dials, things like that. Special dials on two tone is good. Wimbledon, not my favorite, but I would love to hear yours in the comments below. And then let's continue on with our journey with some of the steel pieces and you're going to laugh what they have, but... Okay, so this is some of the rows. Not really much. There's a 41 millimeter date just with the um, smooth uh, 18 karat gold bezel chocolate dial. But here's some of the steel. Uh, well, this is all of the stainless steel, and then we have another picture. But uh, So we have that blue we'll get to in a minute. So we got two uh, ladies, 31 date just, fluted bezel on that first one, and that is an oyster bracelet, Jubilee factory diamonds on the other piece. But that that last one there is a 36 millimeter. Uh, it is diamond dial with blue. It is absolutely a gorgeous piece on Jubilee bracelet. 
Now, it is expensive. It's got the Jubilee. It's got the fluted bezel and the factory diamond uh, dial. But that combination, I don't mind as much with diamonds. I would love to know, what do you think about diamonds? Do you not like them at all in watches? Because, you know, I'm almost to that point. Do you like them a little bit if they're used conservatively? Or do you just don't care and like ice, well, not ice out, but you like factory sets of, you know, Rolex. I would love to hear it all. Um, but my boat is less is more, and that's why you don't need diamonds. But here is one of the pieces that is absolutely stunning in that blue dial. Um, and the diamonds, I don't mind that much. Uh, so, you know, if you don't want to be on a waiting list forever, this can be one of the options out there. So when I said hilarious, this is what I'm talking about here. We have two, of course, ladies uh, pieces. Pretty much you see them in any official dealer. So if you're a lady watching this, you're in luck. You can go to any AD and get any watch you want. Um, speaking about ladies' watches, they did sell uh, the Yachtmaster. I believe it was 37. Yeah, Yachtmaster 37. So, you know, they do do sell, um, and it doesn't just sit in the display case forever. That last one, though, that's pretty funny, right? Uh, if you were to buy a date just like this, uh, you obviously like diamonds, and uh, especially at retail, you must love the look of this piece. You know, it's up to you. It's all a uh, matter of choice, but uh, let's just discuss the specs of it really quick. You know, it's the same as all the other date chests. This one has a uh, Jubilee, but I don't, you know, I don't even know how common they are just because well, this is the most expensive you can buy. So the bezel itself is $3,000 alone. It is 18 karat gold. And of course, you have diamonds all the way around. We have diamond indices on a mother of pearl dial, which is the most expensive dial they make in a stainless steel Rolex. Correct me if I'm wrong, um, but that I, yeah, it is the most expensive. They were telling me there um, and with the indices add on. Uh, to the cost. So it's a very, very expensive watch um, at retail, I should say. It might lose a bit. You know, it definitely doesn't go over list, um, but it depends on the condition, whatever it is. Um, I would love to know, what do you think about that piece? I think it's much better than going out and buying a bust down piece, as people call it, where there's diamonds all over. Yes, it might be even cheaper to get a piece like that. Not really, though, if you're paying for the diamond work. Um, and at the end, this is factory, right? So you have at least, you know, to say that all the diamonds are flawless. It is meant to be in the watch because Rolex, they, what they do is with their serial reference numbers, I should say, um, they, they will tell you, you know, if that watch belongs with the diamond dial, if it belongs with, you know, a bunch of things, because Rolex knows that type of stuff. And it's just pretty insane. You cannot get your watch service. So let's say, if you take out the diamond dial and put in, in let's say, fluted and just fluted, they won't service it. It's just actually pretty insane. Uh, but that's where I'm going to leave it here. A lot of discussing in this video, not much of the cool stuff I showed you. Uh, but I will release a video you might all like uh, in a couple days w discussing the rarest Rolexes I've ever seen. And some of them are very, very rare. Uh, so stay tuned for that. If you do want the Chanel chain giveaway, there is the four steps in the description below. Thank you, and I will definitely catch you in the next one.